the spread between two-year Treasury yields and 10-year Treasury yields falling to the lowest level since the Trump election. Meanwhile, gold rising to its highest level since then. Welcome to Trading Nation. I'm Dominic Chu. We've got Craig Johnson with Piper Jaffrey with us. Also, Dennis Davitt, Harvest Volatility Management. So, gentlemen, let's start with Dennis first. As we talk about this idea of the yield curve and the flattening and what it means for the overall economy, is there a sense, and what are you seeing out there, Dennis, about the overall market environment? Are we pricing in more pessimism about the economy going forward? Well, one of the things, I mean, Craig's going to have some, I'm sure, some great technical analysis about where he sees the yield curve going. But when I go back to my roots of working at an investment bank, I look at the yield curve as much more of a structural positioning going on than anything else. The demand for longer dated U.S. Treasury bonds is still going to be high unless we see too big to fail go away. So time and time again, when these banks raise money, they need to go by sovereign debt of a country. So there's a demand for that 10-year asset that must sit at the bank. Now, we have the short end of the curve where the Fed is raising rates. They've raised rates 75 bips. We could see two, maybe three more raises this year. So the 10-year sitting at two and a half, and a constant demand for long-dated debt because the governments are mandating it out of their major banks, and especially in Europe where interest rates are so low, yes, I think you're going to continue to see the curve flatten. As economic activity picks up, you can even see the curve go inverted with the 10 staying below 3. All right, the long-held conventional wisdom, gentlemen, here is that with the flattening yield curve, you get worse performance for the bank stocks because their NIMS, their net interest margins, their profits start to diminish as the yield curve starts to flatten. Maybe that's the case, maybe not. Maybe it's a changing paradigm. So, Craig, Dennis alluded to the fact that you're looking at the charts. Yes, you always do. You've got the technical view here. We've seen a downtrend. As of late, does it continue? Does the curve continue to flatten? Thanks, Dom. And yes, Dennis, we did bring in some great charts. We brought in two to discuss today. First is the uh, spread between the two and 10 year chart. And what we're seeing with this is we did see rate this spread really bottom in September of last year. It did accelerate post the Trump victory. Um, but at this point in time, it is coming back in. It's retraced about 61 percent of the move uh, from those September lows. It's coming back to a key area support at about 106. You know, from our perspective in the charts, I think it is coming back Back to an area of support. I think if we're going to start to see the uh, long end of the curve not steepen, I'm not sure the Fed's going to be quite as quick to go. The Fed knows what an inverted yield curve means and would mean to the overall market. I don't think they're going to risk that, and they'll continue to push on a uh, uh, policy of taking it very slow. So from my perspective, I think we're getting that kind of retest of uh, the 2 to 10 spread. I'm still optimistic. I still think we're going to see the 10-year bond yield reach about 3, 3 and a quarter by the end of uh, this year. And I continue to think it's going to be a positive sign for overall equity markets. Craig, one last point to you really quickly on the chart side of things. As you look towards the 210 spread, 30-year Treasury note yields, that sort of thing, the Treasury bond yields, mm -hmm. where else are you looking in the marketplace for signs that we could be seeing either a continuation or a bucking of the current trend? Well, one other thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at a chart of gold. And we also brought that chart in today. And on that particular chart, we've seen a move above the 200-day moving average. But what I'm really watching here is can we see the price of gold move above $1,300? If we don't see a move above that, this is going to be just another, again, relief rally in the price of gold. Keep in mind, gold peaked in 2011. All we've had since then have been these really great relief rallies right up into this and then a failure and a sharp move down. So I'll be watching a couple of these pieces together, Dom, to help us decide if this is going to be uh, something more negative for the environment or really just a resetting of expectations. Personally, right now, I think it's just a resetting of expectations. All right, traders across all asset classes certainly watching what's happening with the yield dynamics in the U.S. Treasury market and, of course, other safe haven assets as well. Thank you guys very much for joining us. Dennis Davitt, Harvest Volatility, also Craig Johnson from Piper Jaffray. And I'm Dominic Chu. Thanks for joining us here on Trading Nation. Catch more on tradingnation.cnbc.com. We'll see you next time around.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.